that fellow couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So that fellow didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? Didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. You have been saved? Yeah. If you ever saved, you were saved like that. Yeah. All right. In this video, I want to talk about parasites. And the reason why I want to talk about parasites is because I was recently listening to something where the people were talking about how parasites are devils demonic spirits, demonic entities. And I thought it was interesting. And it got me to thinking about some things such as Jesus saying uh, to his disciples when they were casting out devils in his name, but they came across a certain devil that they couldn't cast out. So they came to Jesus with this issue. And Jesus says that these certain ones, they don't come out except by prayer and fasting. And I think that's something very key that we all should think about and learn about. Why fasting would get rid of some of these devils that when we tell them to leave, they don't leave. Like, how do they have this power to stay? Even though we cast them out in the name of Jesus. And this comes down to a parasite, because a parasite you actually allow into your body and you sustain it. So if you're actually allowing the parasite in and then you do what's necessary to keep that parasite alive, you're allowing it to stay. It has a right to stay and lawfully it can stay. So if you are trying to cast out this devil and it does not leave, it's got permission to be there. It has a right to be there. So you have to remove that right. And that is done through something like prayer and fasting. And I want to get into more detail about this. But before I get into some of these physical entities here, I want to talk about spiritual parasites, these demonic entities, these devils, and how they are much like a parasite when you understand spiritual things, such as your mind, your thoughts are not physical. They are spiritual, where the things going on in your mind, it's like a, a different world, your own personal world your own little playground, where you can imagine whatever you want and do whatever you want in your own spiritual world. But you can take from that and you can manifest it into the physical world, such as what I'm doing here. I'm taking my thoughts and feelings and I bring them forth into words. Words are, again, something spiritual. But it's something spiritual that is leaving a physical, tangible trace where I'm bringing the spiritual into this world and it causes a vibration that shakes the physical world. And then that vibration you can pick up on and you hear it as sound and you put the sound together and you hear my words. Right. And this is just in a way alchemy and transmutation and all all kinds of different names that you can put to this some people would call it sorcery or magic and 
in a lot of ways, that's what it is. Words are magical. And that's where I want to get to this first parasite, is these demonic entities can get into your mind through words. And a picture is worth a thousand words. So they can give you a picture, and it gives you a thousand words, and that gets into your head. Such as when you were young, you might have watched a horror movie that you probably weren't allowed to watch, but you watched it anyway. And those images stick into your head. And then you had nightmares. And any time you looked at something that reminded you of those images, you kind of get a little spooked, right? You get scared as a kid because of that horror movie or show or what have you. And then there's times where you're uh, listening to music, and sometimes you're not listening to it directly, as in you didn't go choose to listen to it. You're just hearing it while you are working at the job site, or you're going to a certain store that's playing it. Whatever reason, there's somebody listening to the song, and next thing you know, it's in your head. And you'll be sitting in your car or doing whatever you're doing, the dishes or what have you, and you start humming or singing that tune. And then you're like, how do I know the song? Why is that in my head? Well, because it was playing earlier and it got into your head, right? Again, with the words and the vibrations, the spiritual thing got into you, right? It, it got into your spiritual world through the physical, which ties into a lot of videos I make having to do with the, the masculine and feminine where the masculine is spiritual and the feminine is physical. And Satan can't directly get to you in the spirit. He can't go into your spiritual world. It's your own personal world. But he wants to get into there. And the only way he can do it is through the woman. As he couldn't get to Adam, he had to go through Eve to get to Adam. So he tries to go through the physical body, through its senses, to get the spiritual world. And he does this with pictures and sounds. And that's where these demonic entities, these devils, can transfer like a virus, like a parasite, through something like teaching. You're teaching an idea, an idea of pantheism, an idea of uh, atheism, the idea of uh, you being God, uh, the, the idea of capitalism, communism. Democrats, Republicans, right? The idea of whatever, right? Whatever it is, you you got an idea, it can act as a, a virus, even if it's like it's not true. You believe it, you give energy to it, you start manifesting that idea into reality, and you create it, such as a form of government, a form of economy. Right? You, you bring forth what was in the spiritual realm into the physical realm. You take this idea and then you indoctrinate children with this idea through schools and churches. And the parasite spreads because what you notice with a lot of these parasites is they actually influence the mind. Sometimes they can take complete control over the mind. And I'll talk more about that when I get into these physical parasites here. But the spiritual parasites do the same thing. When they get into somebody, they want to spread. Right? It's we all want to naturally sustain ourselves and reproduce. It's like a, a natural instinct. And the same thing with these parasites, these ideas. These ideas are actually demonic. They're devils. And they end up grouping people into these things that we would generally call something like a cult. And we think of cults as usually as religious, but they can be a school cult. They can be a governmental cult, right? You can even have in some kind of economic cult. You can have cults in different aspects of life and education and what have you. And it can breed all kinds of crazy, insane, different things. And... Uh, when we see that, we start to see how these things also become something that is physical, because 
once it, it gets into the spiritual world that you have within yourself, into the mind, it can affect the body, such as a placebo. You know how they, they have a bunch of people who have the cold, and they give, well, let's just say there's 10 of them to keep this simple. They give five of them a sugar pill. It's just a pill that doesn't do anything, right? It's sugar or it's salt. It's just whatever. And they take it, and then they give the other five actual medicine, something that supposed to help with the cold. All 10 of them take it. And they notice that something like all of them get better. That's a placebo effect because the people who took the, the, the fake medicine thought they were taking real medicine. And so they had the positive thoughts. They're thinking, oh, I'm going to get better. And because they have that positivity, their physical, their spiritual world affected the physical. Right? Kind of like what Jesus says. As a man believeth, he is, that that is what he is, right? So you got to be careful about the mind, the thoughts, because it affects the body, right? So when you have these ideas within your mind, such as you're sick, well, you can create, make the body sick. Such as the positive negative attitudes kind of thing, right? But not only that, when you got these ideas into your head, you can cause a lot of issues such as you got this idea of having to not be rude when people offer you something to eat and you're going out and you're visiting people and they're always offering you sweets and you have the idea where you can't say no you keep eating the sweets you end up doing things inadvertently to yourself like affecting something like your teeth Right, uh, infecting uh, any kind of thing that have to do with your immune system because too much sugar throws the immune system out of whack and can get you sick. So you might end up getting sick here and there because you know too much sweets. You might end up getting something like diabetes, right? Uh, and then on top of that, cancers. There's a lot of cancers that actually feed off of sugar. And cancer is a parasite. It's a, a physical manifestation of something demonic. And so there's been creepy things actually found with cancerous tumors where when they removed them from people and they cut them open, they found teeth being formed in these things, even eyeballs. Like it was trying to create a new body. It was, tr it was actually getting the, the body of the host to create a different body because with cancer what it does is actually takes your cells and turns them into cancer cells where your cells basically become immortal they can still die if they are wounded and destroyed by something else such as your immune system can attack and kill cancer cells but if they're not attacked they will live forever right they're immortal in that sense and I imagine that becomes enticing to other parts of your body where they want to join this collective, this cancerous tumor within your body. And not only that, the, the cancers, a lot of them can actually feed off of hormone imbalances, uh, which uh, I've recently learned a lot about the soy. The soy actually messes with the estrogen uh, in the, the females to help produce stuff like breast cancer. And it can also cause a lot of issues with the males and I was looking at a lot of products and I was noticing how many products have soy in it and not too long ago I was looking for beef jerky I like to snack on beef jerky and I was noticing not only how much of the beef jerky has sugar in it and I was like I just want some beef jerky right it doesn't necessarily have to be flavored you know you know if it's smoked or peppered that's that's awesome that's great but there was like sugar in all of it and I was like well that sucks. Like, let me well, let me find some that doesn't have that much sugar in it. Then I was noticing how much of it actually has soy. I was like, why is there soy in beef jerky? There seems to be no need for it to be there, but there it is. And I was noticing it in other products that don't even need it in it, but for some reason it's in there. And it's like, oh, because these parasites, they want to spread. Because a lot of these 
physical parasites, they affect your body. Where a parasite doesn't actually have to be something like a, a nematode, a tapeworm, hookworm, or a roundworm, where you, you see it, you can see it with your naked eye, but there can be things that are, well, well nematode, I'm not sure if you can actually see with your naked eye either. But there's things like uh, yeast and bacteria that can live in your body as a parasite that actually encourages you to eat things like sugar and things that feed the yeast and other things in your, your body that may want that, such as cancers. And they get you to crave it. Uh, just like we see with some of these funguses that will get the insect or the slug to go want to go up high up on a branch or a leaf or something to make itself seen by the birds that would eat it. And what's interesting is that the birds and the scriptures are often referred to as the, the spirit entities, these angels or fallen angels, devils. Like the unclean birds are referred to as the, the devils such as we read in Revelation 17 and 18 about Babylon becoming this home for all the unclean and hateful spirits and birds, the fowls of the air. Because they're, the, fowl, uh, the birds seem to be like a physical representation of these spiritual entities. That's why people have these omens about seeing an owl during the day or all of a sudden there's this weird raven sitting around and you know the people have these superstitions and tales that they have to tell you about when you see certain birds certain do, or certain birds do certain things during certain times and what have you. It's all kinds of connections to that kind of thing. And uh, it's interesting that these when these insects and other critters get infected by this fungus, which acts as a parasite feeding off of the, the, uh, the creature, it ends up getting them to want to go up into the sun, into the high place to be seen. So the bird would eat it because then this fungus reproduces into the bird's fecal matter. And when it goes and craps, there's its, its young, right? It, its seed, whatever you want to call it. And the other insect that may come across it or eat it or what have you, well, then they get infected with that fungus. Uh, we... We see this also a lot of times with dirty things like fecal matter, such as uh, there's a parasite that lives in cats. And if you're pregnant, women should stay away from, probably just stay away from the cats in general, but around, stay away from the uh, litter boxes and the, the fecal matter of cats because there's a parasite that lives there that actually can affect women and kill the fetus while it's in the womb, which is strange and creepy there, right? Uh, but we see how that's very demonic, how, again, you know, the devils want to get to the woman and they want to kill the young, right? They don't want you to be born again. Uh, we, we see, you know, a connection there. Uh, but a lot of times, like I was saying, with their, these demonic entities having permission and how fasting is needed at times to get rid of these is because you let them in. Like I was saying about fecal matter, there's a lot of animals such as like catfish, crabs, lobsters, and other things that will eat the fecal matter in the ocean or in the rivers and lakes and what have you. And of course, they would end up carrying those kind of parasites. And we have ways of avoiding those parasites, like uh, raising them farm style there and cooking them very well. But you're still opening yourself up to the possibility of receiving one of these through what the Bible would call unclean foods. Now, I'm not saying you can't eat these things, and if you do, you're a sinner and you're going to hell. No, I'm just saying that you have to be aware of these things, because if you're eating these things and you have a, a parasite, it's going to get you to crave those things and want to do those things, and you're going to fight against anybody telling you not to do it, because you already have that spirit within you, I want you to keep feeding it. So then when you have a parasite, it, it usually wants to crave, usually, not all the time, but usually it's sugar. It reminds me of uh, back in the day, that movie was a Men in Black, where this guy is replaced by an alien. And all he wants is sugar. 
right? Because he's replaced by like a bug that's wearing his skin. And of course, bugs like sugar. And that's how it's a lot, a lot, uh, like a lot. These people end up being, they look like the same person on the outside, but inwardly they've been changed because a parasite is taken over. Sometimes the parasite is like, it's a spiritual thing. It's in the mind, the heart. It's been taken over by a spiritual entity, which you can cast out in the name of Jesus. But some of these, they have a way where they don't have control. They have more of an influence because they're a parasite and it, they, they have taken physical form, such as by a cancer. And when you learn about these things, such as someone I, I love dearly recently has gotten cancer. That's why I've been learning about these things, that the cancer feeds off of sugar and the excess estrogen being produced by these things such as uh, soy and they got to stay away from soy and sugar and it happens to be the thing that they enjoy mo the most is these things that end up having have soy in a lot of these different breads and different products and of course sugar and everybody loves something sweet here and there and sometimes more often than not right and uh it feeds that cancer. It feeds that parasite. And a lot of these other critters here, that's what they like to eat as well. They get you to crave these certain foods so that you feed them. And not only that, they can reproduce and they can uh, infect you more and have more and more of an influence on you. And that's why fasting, not just from food, can be very beneficial to help cleanse parasites, whether they're physical or spiritual. So when you when you fast, don't just think about, oh, I'm just going to have water. I'm going to water fast or I'm just going to have juice and I'm not going to eat for a day or two or three or a week. I don't know how experienced you are with doing those things. Or if you're going to do an intermediate fast where you only eat one meal or two meals a day, something like that. If you're going to do those things, that helps with these physical parasites. But there's also a fasting that has nothing to do with what you're eating. You can still be eating whatever you eat and eat three meals a day if that's what you want to do with snacks and what have you. But you're still allowing spiritual parasites in through the music you're listening to, through the television shows you're watching, through the entertainment you choose. You're allowing these ideas to come in. Sometimes you're watching something that's supposed to be Christian, whether it's on something like here, like on YouTube. I don't know if they take my videos and they put commercials on there. And sometimes they put a little tune or they put an idea into that commercial or they put something suggestive. Sometimes they try to sell with sex, right? So they put something sexual there. They put that idea, that image there that can come by later and try to influence you, right? And there's times where you need to fast from like your phone and tablet, from the internet, from the TV to flush these parasites out to not give them what they crave and to spend more time just reading the word of God. Just read it because it acts like a spiritual medicine to wash and cleanse you from the inside out. And it, the devils flee from it. The parasites die. They need to get away. And, uh, I guess the last thing I would bring up here is something they were bringing up in this video I was listening to, where they were talking about, yeah, these parasites, they how they have an influence, like I was saying, on how you may want to eat certain foods. They were saying these parasites, they want to spread to other people, right? So it's not just going to get you to crave something like food or a certain type of food, but it's also going to get you to crave contact with other people. And these parasites, oftentimes they spread through fecal matter. So not only are they going to get you to crave something like sexual contact, be, you know, fornicating, not, you know, not just having a monogamous relationship, which is both or, you know, there's three parts to it. There's your spiritual health, your emotional health, and your physical health is all benefit by being benefited by being in a monogamous relationship where it's just you and your spouse 
is beneficial for you on all levels. But when you're fornicating or have an open marriage or swingers or what have you, you are allowing these spiritual entities to spread through the, the physical contact you're having with one another. And you're allowing these physical parasites to spread. And a lot of times they want to get you to do some of the more dirtier things. Uh, you know, they have to do with areas that produce the fecal matter, right? Because that's where a lot of these parasites spread is through the fecal matter. So, you know, they'll get a lot of these ideas to do these things so that the parasite can spread to you or to others. And I like the point that they were making is that not only these people want to go out and have sex and they really strongly want to go do this, but it gets them to dress and act in a way to attract it. So they're like they were saying, you know, you need to be wary of such as these women that are dressing the way they're dressing because they probably have something demonic, whether it's spiritual or physical, some kind of parasite, some kind of disease, a virus that is affecting their mind, trying to get them to appear more sexually appealing to get you to go after them so it can spread to you. The same thing with these men who are going out trying to get, you know, the different women and they're trying to show off in Peacock, whether they're showing off the, the physical fitness to show off their wealth, their status, right? They're doing whatever. It's probably because there's something there demonic that wants to spread. You know, these people who really desperately want to be with somebody else and can't just be alone. It is probably something influencing them, right? There's something affecting them, whether it's, you know, spiritual or physical. And that's why fasting is something that I suggest you do. Uh, I've noticed that the two main things that I think are the biggest issue for us as people, as men and women, that really control us is Food and sex. Those are the two things that we we crave and we want and affect us. Where they have a, a control over our life. Where a lot of the commercials have to do with food or using sex to get you to want the product. Sometimes they mix both. But they have a car and they'll put a woman dressed provocatively eating a cheeseburger on top of it, right? To get you to think of those things when you think of the car. Because those things are stuff that you really want and you really desire. That you can't just have one cheeseburger and have sex one time and then you're satisfied for the rest of your life. No, you keep needing it. You keep desiring it and wanting it. So to really have control over you, you need to get control over those two aspects. Right? So fasting can help you do these things. And that's what I've noticed with fasting is that even doing something like intermediate fasting, having just two meals a day or one meal a day. Now that's what I do. I just eat one meal a day. Uh, one day a week, I end up having two meals a day. You know, I, I pig out. And to a lot of people, that's not pigging out because I'll have three meals a day with snacks. I don't snack. Uh, I've been using this to help the body, but not just to be healthy, but also to build self-control and discipline. And I've noticed that as I've controlled the appetite, I've been able to better control the, the sexual appetite, where the thoughts and desires there I can control. So that the same way with the food where, oh yeah, I'm hungry, but I'm not going to eat right now. I'm saving myself for lunch or for dinner. Or I'm done eating for today. I'm going to save myself for tomorrow. Where, okay, now I'm just going to ignore the fact that I'm hungry and go about my day, right? Because it's not an issue. It's not an option. Like right now, I'm saving myself for, for dinner. I'm hungry right now. And it's a lunchtime. It's about 1230 where I'm at. And I'm not going to eat until 
like 435 and I'm okay with that I'm not getting hangry about it you know when I was first doing this there was a lot of things that had to deal with being hangry like you're irritated but now it's just you know that's just how it is I'm learned to function I can still do everything I'm not out of energy I'm not gonna pass out because I haven't eaten but I've noticed that with that, it's allowed me to also do the same thing with uh, the thoughts about something like sex, where you might be out and about and you see someone dressed scandalously. You see an advertisement. You're watching something and, you know, those things come up in the show or in, in again, a commercial. Whatever, you know, these things pop up right in your face sometimes. And where, especially younger, like a teenager, that's you all know, once you see something that's sexual, you're just more than happy to dwell on those thoughts, right? Well, now it's control. Like, oh, oh, there's some food, but I'm not eating. And then you just turn and go about your day. Where before those thoughts were more consuming. Like, I need to eat. I'm going to dwell on these pictures. Because I enjoy it, right? Now it's like, no, it's not about pleasure, right? I get pleasure from the food. I get pleasure from these images. It's about joy. And the joy comes from self-control where now when I eat, the food tastes better and it's so much more enjoyable that I'm not eating all the time. So when I do eat, it tastes really good, especially since you might eat a lot of different foods throughout the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, where when I'm eating one or two meals a day, I'm not eating that many meals. So it's going to be a longer time in between before I eat the same type of meal again. So when I eat a meal I haven't had in some time, it tastes so much better, right? There's more pleasure to it. And the same thing with being intimate with my wife when I'm not focused on all that other stuff, it becomes a lot more enjoyable, right? Uh, so I just wanted to make these videos to encourage self-control because there's a lot of people that when you preach the gospel to them, they say, oh, that's a license to sin and you don't think you have to do anything. I was like, yeah, that doesn't mean I don't. Like I'm not doing this to save my soul. I'm doing this to take care of myself. I'm doing this because God gave himself for me. He died so that I can live. I want to live in a way that's pleasing to him. I want to appreciate what he's done and show that he didn't just do it for himself. Right? Because he's a good person and he loves us. He did it for himself. But I want to show that I appreciate it and I want to make something of it. Like. I want him to use me in a way that benefits everybody else. And that's not going to happen if I just go, oh, I'm saved. Now I'm just going to go chill, sit around, do nothing. Right? Which is what people act like I'm doing. You preach them the gospel and they're like, oh, you don't even try to fight sin. You just give in to sin. What are you talking about? You don't, like, they don't even know you. They just make this assumption. It's like, why would I even be talking to you about these things if that's how I am? Like, oh, I'm saved. I don't even have to talk to you now. But I am. Why? Because I want to get you saved too. Right? And uh, it's just strange uh, that, you know, that's how a lot of people are. But again, this is not done to get saved it's just to be healthy it's to not be happy but actually be joyful because happiness fades but the joy remains and the joy is there even when things are going bad right like i'm hungry i'm, I'm okay with it I, I still have joy i'm still enjoying myself making this video trying to help others right but when you're, you don't have that joy, 
you can't sit here and do things like this because you're just focused on yourself and your happiness where I'm not happy because I'm hungry. I need to supply my hunger and get food. And sometimes you can take this to be something sexual too, right? That you hunger for something other than food. But you, you get the idea. So when you, you take control of yourself and you cast the devils out of you, these parasites out, make sure they don't have any right to be here, then you can be a brighter light to the world and a better influence to the world where they can see your lifestyle and what God has done with you. And you can show people the way. Because even if they don't accept the gospel, they still look at your life and they see that you, you have joy. Like you're at peace with what they, they might not see it as God, but they see it as the world, the universe, whatever they see it as. They see you've got peace and you, you've got that serenity. They want that. So when you talk to them about something like this, about something like fasting, you might actually help them come to the gospel because you would be inadvertently getting them to cast out devils because they might not have spiritual devils. They might have the physical form of these parasites, and you get them to cast these things out by fasting and not feeding them and getting away from even the, the spiritual parasites, such as from the music and the, the entertainment that they get into, that they get away from those parasites and they stop feeding them and they flush them out, they cast out those devils, then they may be able to see the gospel and understand it. Because what is the... The Bible tell us in Matthew, I can't remember the chapter off my head, off my head. I want to say 15, but don't quote me on that one, where Jesus is giving the parable of the sower in Matthew. And then there's a little break where he gives the, the parable, then he's talking to the, the disciples, and then he comes back to explain the parable. A little bit further down the chapter and he says all right you know those first people that i was saying where you you give them the word of god and the fowl come and eat the seed because the word of god is the seed that he's trying to plant but these fowl come and they eat it those are the devils right so he's saying that when he gives them the word of god he's explaining this and they don't understand the fowl eat the seed so that they never believe, right? Those fowl are devils. So if you can get these people to cast the devils out, then they may be able to receive the, the gospel, the word of God, such as 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23 through 25 tell us that the word of God that lives forever is the gospel. And that's what they're born again by. That's the incorruptible seed. They receive that. And if they don't have the parasites, those devils there, it can take root. And I think what we need to do is to cast these devils out, not just these obvious spiritual ones, but these physical ones that are really affecting people. And I think something like this will really help people out with this. So with all that being said, thanks for watching and take care. All right, I just wanted to make a quick video here to put at the end of all my videos, encouraging you to prayfully get into the scriptures. As we read here in Hebrews chapter 12 at verse 2, it says, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And this is very interesting that it refers to Jesus as the author of our faith. An author is somebody who writes. And in Romans chapter 10, verses 16 and 17, it says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you see here how Jesus is the author and finisher of our, finisher of our, of our faith, and how you get faith from hearing the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. The Bible, the scriptures are the written word of God. It is God in our world. It's God.
God's representative in our world, and that would be the King James Bible. And if you're saying it doesn't say read, it says hear. Well, then read it out loud, my friends. I know some of you are wise asses, and that's what you're going to say. Well, then read it out loud. And you build your faith. And you notice how obeying the gospel here is about believing it. That's how you obey it. The gospel is the good news of our salvation. That Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. But coming back to the word of God here, we are told in Isaiah 34, 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. This is very fitting because Isaiah has 66 chapters, just like there's 66 books in the Bible. And if you do a study on this, you can see that each chapter of Isaiah lines up with each book of the Bible. The first chapter for Genesis, the last chapter for Revelation. Have fun doing that. And why should you seek out the book in the, of the Lord and read? So that Jesus never tells you this, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God, as we read here in Matthew 22, 29, when he's talking to the Sadducees who are coming to him with a very silly question that anybody could answer if they actually knew the scriptures. But you see, the Sadducees, they didn't use the whole Old Testament. They just used Moses. So they didn't get the light from the Old Testament to help you understand the Torah. Just like the New Testament shines light and helps you understand the Old Testament. None of it adds or removes from what Moses wrote. It helps you understand what Moses wrote. That's why Isaiah tells us here in Isaiah 8 verse 20, to the law, which is the instructions, the Torah, what God told Moses to write, that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the first five books of your Bible there. It says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So you see, you test the people to see if they actually have light in them. There's people who have an outward show of light, as Satan himself can come as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. But how do you test the spirits to see if there's truly light in them? They have to line up according to the scriptures. Jesus was not afraid to be tested in the scriptures. He would say, have you not read? It is written to search the scriptures, bring them up. They testify of me, right? He wasn't worried about that. Paul wasn't either. Acts 17, 11. He wasn't worried about being tested the scriptures. He didn't make some nonsense about you can't understand the scriptures. You need me to interpret them. No, he, he actually called the Berians noble for hearing what he had to say and then searching the scriptures to see if it was so, because that's what we're supposed to do. If you don't line up with the scriptures, you're not of God. Very simple, very easy. God made it very easy for us to know him and to know who is not of him. He gave us his word, and it's super simple. If it doesn't line up with him, then obviously it's somebody else trying to say that they're from him. A stranger trying to kidnap you, right? What does Jesus tell us about the word in John 17, 17? He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So you Christians that want to be sanctified and you're trying to sanctify yourself by repenting of all your sins so that you become sinless. You want that sanctification. You need to get into the word because when you have the word abiding in you, God changes you from the inside out where you're not making the change where you sanctify yourself by becoming some sinless being by focusing on your sins and fighting against them. No, that's just cleaning the outside of the cup and containing your sinful nature. You need to come to Jesus to be born again, sealed with his Holy Spirit and become one with his spirit. And as Jesus says in John 6, 63, his word is spirit and it is truth. Flesh profits nothing. You get into the word. You are partaking of the Spirit of God, and God's Spirit is life-giving, as we see in Genesis, bringing life to things that have no life. You want that life. You want to be sanctified. You need to get into the Word. As we're told here in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 27, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, 
that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So how do you receive this cleansing? By getting into the word. It is spirit. The spirit is in reference to water. You want that cleansing? Get into the word. That's where you are going to be sanctified. So that you would be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. No blemish whatsoever. You need to get into the word so that Jesus is abiding in you and you are abiding in him. You see that? So, moving on to this last verse here. John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Because the only way to know the Father is to know the Son. You can't come to the Father without going through Jesus. When you know Jesus, you know the Father, because they are one. Jesus is the Father in the flesh. And eternal life is to know them. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 7, to these people who are doing a lot of great works in his name, they're prophesying in his name, they're casting out devils in his name, they're doing many mighty works in his name. And Jesus says, I never knew you. You see, you're saved not because of your works, not because you repented of your sins, not because you're perfect and you've deserved it and you've earned it somehow, that you've proven yourself. No, you're saved because of your relationship with God. If you've come to the cross and have been born again, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. You become one spirit with the Lord. There's no way Jesus can say, I never knew you. Because he knows you. He made you anew at the cross. He knows you intimately. You're saved at that point. You need to have that deep relationship with God. Just as Adam knew Eve and she conceived, you need to know God on that level where you are born again. You receive the word of God, which is the seed of God into your heart which would be your womb I know as a man you might not want to think of that but that's how it is eat the humble pie so that you receive the seed of God that you may be born again you see the women help us understand our role to God because to God we are the bride the bride of Christ we are as the woman so you need to eat the humble pie Receive the seed so that you can be born again. But a lot of Christians, they are just like a lot of women today. We don't need a man. So they're never going to be born again. Right? A lot of Christians, we don't need God. We can do it ourselves. And they take on the name Christian. Christians seem to be the easiest people to fool. Because all you got to do is say you're Christian. And they'll follow after you. You can be preaching lies because they don't test you to the scriptures. Donald Trump is a good example of a lot of Christians just blindly following him because he said he was Christian. Even though when he asked was asked if he comes to Jesus to ask for forgiveness, he says, no, no, I don't really do that. I, I don't really see myself as a bad person and I just try to do better. So he's not a Christian. He's never been born again. He doesn't believe the gospel, the good news of our salvation. He doesn't even believe he needs it. Yet, the Christians are holding him up as if he's Christian and as if he's the, the savior of our country. Right? They're making an idol out of him. And he, obviously, he's a pompous ass. Right? And the only reason why he looks good is because the left looks so bad. If it wasn't because of the left looking so hideous, you would be able to see clearly that Trump is no better. He just says you what you want to hear. But then somebody like me, who preaches to you the truth, but then I might say a word you don't like. Like I might say shit or ass, and all of a sudden you're offended and you turn off the video right here saying, this guy's not a Christian, you never listen to a thing I say, because I said a couple of words, that the Bible doesn't say not to say. The Bible doesn't say not to say any words like that. It says not to have corrupt speaking 
and guile. Corrupt speaking is what you get from politicians like Trump. That lie. And that's what guile is. It's manipulation. Fake, feigned words. Flattery. I'm not doing that. I'm not speaking anything corrupt. I'm just, instead of saying crap or butt, sometimes I end up saying shit or ass. And me saying that right now, you probably getting mad. And that's probably because you're immature Christian, or not even Christian at all. You're just Christian in name only. And that's why you follow fake Christians so easily. So if you're offended by such things, have fun. Go away. You're not breaking my heart. You're, you're not taking anything from me. You're only hurting yourself by rejecting the truth and following after bullshit. So thanks for watching. Now I'm going to splice into something from Rockman that I really enjoy for the end of this. Take care. That fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So that fella didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? <laughs> didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? Yeah. You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest by kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. You have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that.